Hey there, Amanda from The Happy Homestead. So today is the second video in this three-part video series of what all we can do with one gallon of milk. So the first video, if you hadn't seen it yet, I'll post the link above, is that is where I made butter, homemade butter from the cream. So I skimmed the cream off and made butter. So check that out if you hadn't seen it yet. So today is the second one and we are gonna be making mozzarella cheese. First time ever doing that, just like it was my first time making the butter. So I mentioned, um, and let me mention it again, is that I purchased this mozzarella and ricotta cheese making kit from the New England Cheese Supply Company. Um, I've heard that company is actually a very reputable company. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. This is the first time I'm using their products, but I had read great reviews, good reports from them as far as quality and their recipes and whatnot. So I think I'm starting out with a good base. <laughs> <laughs> it's that way today. But so this kit, I'm gonna open it up and show you everything that it came with. So this kit can make mozzarella, I think, and ricotta. It's not an or, It's a, I think it's an and. Um, but we're gonna start with the mozzarella today. All right, so let's open this up and see what's in here. Okay, so when I opened the kit, this is one of the first things that was in it. And um, this, I believe, is the rennet tablets, and you need rennet to make cheese. And so within the instructions, it said to put the rennet in the freezer. So I just took it out of my freezer. Um, but yeah, so when you get the rennet tablets, put them in your freezer until you're ready to bake the cheese. So that came in the kit, and there are five tablets. And within a recipe, you only need, I think, like a quarter or a half of a tablet, so it really goes pretty far. This isn't like a once and done kit. The instructions came with it, and within the instructions, there's actually plenty of recipes. There is the whole milk ricotta, um, mozzarella made with dry milk, um, and then Ricky's 30 minute mozzarella, which is I think what we are doing today. Um, and then there's recipes on what you can do with your cheese. So they have a fe Italian feather bread, Napoleon's lasagna, pizza dough, right? So all kinds of recipes in here, but the first two are the ricotta and the mozzarella. The kit also came with a little thermometer, right? So I'm gonna, it has a clip here. So I'm gonna stick that in the pan so I can keep an eye on the temperature of the milk. It came with cheese salt. Now, I have no idea what cheese salt is. Well, I'm reading it now. So it just says ingredients, sea salt. <laughs> so maybe you could use sea salt. Um, but it's iodine and additive free. And then this is citric acid. So a powdered citric acid, right? Um, that you need for your cheese also. And then this is the butter micellin, like a cheesecloth. It's a very fine grade cheesecloth. And then in addition to the kit, I purchased these little measuring spoons. Um, we all have measuring spoons in our kitchen, but I doubt we all have these size. So it was like 3 16th, 1 8th, 1 16th, 1 32, 1 64, right? So um, really small measurements, because you need those small measurements for the cheese and, uh, excuse me, the cheese salt and the citric acid. So I bought those. And then the only other thing I bought with my kit were these gloves. So when I was at the Homesteaders of America Tennessee conference and I was talking to some people who do cheese, they were saying, get the gloves, just get them. Because when you're stretching and playing and, and working around with the mozzarella, it is very hot, um, and so these are specific types of gloves that the New England Cheese Making Company sold, and so I got those as well. And so I've got my milk, right? So this is the, the milk that I purchased from that dairy nearby our house. You can see the lines here. I skimmed off the cream to make that butter, um, and this is just a little extra of the milk. So I have very close to two gallons, and so that's what I'm gonna do today. Now, the recipe is for one gallon of milk. I am going to double it. I don't know if you can, but that's what I'm gonna to attempt to do. So you need one gallon of milk, one and, fourth, one and one fourth cup cool water, 
uh, one and a half teaspoon citric acid, a fourth of a rennet tablet, and a teaspoon sea salt, which, or the cheese salt, which is optional. Um, and then you need a gallon stainless steel pot pan. I'm using obviously larger than a gallon. Um, you need a thermometer, which it came with, a colander, a slotted spoon, a long knife, and the rubber gloves. So I think we've got everything. Um, yeah, so let's start. So the first thing I need to do is dissolve part of the rennet tablet in some cool chlorine-free water. Um, now remember, I'm doubling the recipe. So for one gallon of milk, it's a quarter of the tablet and a quarter cup of water. So I'm gonna do a half a tablet, half a cup of water. Um, and then it says stir and set aside. And then just wrap the remaining tablet in plastic and store in the freezer. So the cool thing I've noticed, let me open this up here. Um, actually, while I'm opening this, I looked, I went back and looked and the kit was $23. Uh, the gloves were six. The extra little measuring spoons were six. I think that's it. So it really wasn't that, you know, it was pretty affordable. Okay, this is what I was gonna mention. If you can see that tablet, it already has the cross marks in it to easily cut it. So that way you're not like having to try and find a pill cutter or you know, like all those other little things. I am going to cut it into the quarters just so it's done. Okay. So we've got four quarters. I'm going to put two in my half a cup of cool chlorine free water. I'm going to put the other two in a baggie with the rest of the rennet tablets and they are going to go right back in the freezer. Okay. Set aside and now mix some citric acid into some chlorine free water. All right, so it says one and a half teaspoons of citric acid to one cup cool water. So I'm gonna get two cups of cool water. So I've got two cups of cool water. I'm going to add three teaspoons citric acid. All right, because it was one and a half teaspoons per one cup of water. So got my normal measuring spoons here. Okay, three teaspoons. One, two, three. Okay. okay, so we've got step one, which is dissolve the rennet into water, done. Step two was the citric acid into water, that is done. So now we're gonna head to the stove. Here's my pot that I'm gonna be using. So it's a large pot. And remember, if you're doing one gallon, you can get away with a smaller pot. Um, I've got the thermometer already on the edge so I can monitor the temperature. So we're gonna put the citric acid, the, the citric acid water mixture into the pot. We're gonna pour our milk in and we're just gonna start stirring. And the goal is to heat the milk to a temperature, right? So here it says, if you're using pasteurized, whether it be low pasteurized or vat pasteurized milk, right, you're gonna go to 90 degrees. I am using raw milk. If you're using unpasteurized milk, you're gonna go to 88 degrees. Um, and then you will add your rennet in and like stir it up and down and then cover the pot. So let's go to those steps. Okay, so now we add in our citric acid water. I'm gonna just start turning the burner up to, my burner goes from like a low to high, like a one to nine. I'm gonna go to a six. I'm gonna start putting our milk in. It's a really tall pot, but you know what? My thermometer is not even remotely reaching the liquid. <laughs> So I hope my pot's not too big. <laughs> ah. Okay. 
Oh my gosh, guys, it's not actually reaching it. It ain't touching it at all. <laughs> Wait, I might have another one. <sighs> so learn from my mistakes, guys. Make sure you have a thermometer <laughs> that can actually get in your pot. I might have to hold this. I think I do. It's been about 10 minutes and we're currently at 80 degrees. So I've got another eight degrees to go. And I turned the burner up a little bit more to eight but I am constantly stirring. We are at 88 degrees. You can see that before it goes down. It's starting to go down quick, but we're at 88. So I turned the burner off. I'm going to remove this from the stove. All right, and now we're gonna add in the rennet. So it says to stir in the rennet, rennet for 30 seconds with up and down motion. So I'm gonna stir, you can see it's actually fully dissolved right now. After we get this stirred through for 30 seconds, we're gonna cover it and leave it sit here on the counter. Now it says if you're using pasteurized milk that you'll leave it sit for five minutes. Since I'm using raw milk, I'm leaving it sit for 10 minutes. Oh my gosh, you can already start seeing it come together. Do you see that? Oh wow, the curds are separating from the whey. seconds. We're going to cover it and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes is up. That doesn't look like it's supposed to. <laughs> Oh my God, that does not look like it's supposed to. That's the way, I think. It's supposed to, oh goodness. It's supposed to look like that, where you have um, all of the curds up top. It, should, it says, check the curd, it should look like a custard with a clear separation between the curd and the whey. Well, we definitely have that clear separation. I can feel my curd actually at the bottom. Now what do I do? <laughs> this didn't quite match. I don't know if I should try to proceed or let it sit more. The next step is you actually um, like cut through the curd in two different directions, right? All the way to the bottom of the pan. So the curd is supposed to be like a lot in here. And then you're cutting through it to make chunks of curd. Um, so yeah, we don't have a custard. It says if the curd is too soft or the whey is milky, let it sit for a few more minutes. If your milk did not form a curd, well, it did form a curd, but then please see page three about choosing your milk. <laughs> I have messed this up. Oh God. Yeah, ultra pasteurized does not work. Well, we didn't use ultra pasteurized. All right, I don't know, I think. So I can feel the curd down there. I think I'm just gonna continue. I'm just gonna continue. So we're gonna cut through it. I mean, I can feel it, yeah. It is there. Oh, 
Oh, did you see that? Maybe it just needs more time to set. See, I'm cutting. It's not cutting all that great. The only, oh yeah. <laughs> It's like one big blob. <laughs> Look at that. That didn't quite work. I mean, I think I can still make cheese from it. That's a huge blob though. See that? It just doesn't really cut it very well. Um, I'm going to do my best. I think what I could have done differently is this milk was a few days old, right, from milking maybe I should have used it immediately. That's my only thought process. The show must go on. <laughs> so we're going to continue. Let's see what happens. At this point, I mean, why not? So now we're going to put it back on the stove and heat it to 105. Uh, yeah. I think so. No, we're gonna go to 110. Because after you get to the next step, you have two methods of heating up your curds. It's either microwave or water bath. I'm gonna do water bath. I don't wanna do the microwave. Um, so we're actually gonna heat it up to 110, then take it off the burner and continue to stir for a few minutes and then proceed to the water bath. So let's go. <laughs> See what happens. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, we got curd. <laughs> it's just, maybe I should try to cut it again. This is real life, people. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. Now, I wanna say, yeah, this is not cutting easily. I wanna say that this is not any fault of the New England Cheese Making Company. I do, I don't think I've, followed the directions off though. I do think I followed the directions right. I think it is because my milk was a few days old. That's the only thing I can think of. But we are going to heat to 110. All right, we are at 110 degrees. And our water bath water is at the right temperature also. So we're gonna keep this, I'll turn the heat off, keep this stirring and I'm gonna move off the heat. All right, so then it says to just stir for an additional two to five minutes. I don't really know what difference that's gonna make <laughs> at this point, but I'm just gonna leave it. Okay. So it says ladle your curds into a colander folding the curds gently as you drain off the whey. And then you're dipping the curds into the hot water. And then you can take a spoon and fold the curds until they become elastic and stretchable. They're all ready. <laughs> elastic and stretchable. When it's stretchable, remove the curd from the liquid and pull it like taffy. The stretching elongates the proteins. If it doesn't stretch easily, return it to the hot water for more heat. Okay, and then at that point, I guess you can add the salt. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take this over to the sink and we're going to save the whey because the whey is what I'm gonna try to make ricotta with. I don't really have a lot of confidence <laughs> in making the ricotta right now. But again, I've got to go through this. I spent the money on this milk on this kit and I want to go through this experience and try it. All right, so let's drain off our curds and save the whey. I mean, it looks like cheese. Oh, is that it? <laughs> That's it. There's my big, my big cheese. <laughs> okay. So actually that was easy. So just save the way right in here. Let's just be sure. I thought. Oh, that's it. Okay. Set that aside. This is the hot water bath. 
and it needs to be around 185 so it's coming down I'm gonna start to dip so I think what I do is I just keep it here in the colander actually what I'm gonna do is pour some of this in here yeah it's still at temperature That didn't work. Yep, all right, so let's put this in here. Is that even big enough? <laughs> it's working very well. <laughs> here we go. And I think then what do you do? Oh my goodness gracious. This probably is so second nature to so many people. Basically, I'm just stretching at this point, so this is where I'm gonna put my gloves on. Stretching, adding salt, and then I can form it into whatever I want. <sighs> to which I say, can I now? Really? <laughs> See? Oh gosh, my water might be too hot. Look, it's like melting into the colander. Oh my gosh. All right, let's just start stretching. I'd love to say this was an instant success, but I do think I need more practice. No wonder cheese is expensive, guys. You need quality ingredients to start with, which is not cheap. Not necessarily easy to find either. But yeah, this process is a little more than I thought it would be. I don't know what I was expecting, but... Yeah, now I got melted cheese into my colander. <laughs> All right. I think at this point, I mean, it smells good. I am going to add, I'm going to take this hot water out. I don't need this. I'm going to add some salt, stretch it a little bit more to incorporate the salt, and then put it in the fridge, and we will use it on pizza. I mean, if we had some fresh tomatoes right now from the garden, it'd be awesome to have like a caprese salad. But, oh, for the love of God, <laughs> I can't get this open. <laughs> oh my goodness, why won't that open? Yep. We're gonna use regular old sea salt from my kitchen. <laughs> I don't have patience for this anymore. Okay, so I'm just taking, this is regular old, literally pink Himalayan sea salt. Put some of that in. I'm not even using the gloves at this point. I'm just get this worked in. Colander was a bad idea. Oh my goodness, it's all melted in my colander. How am I gonna get that out? Yeah, this looks delectable. <laughs> I mean, wouldn't you wanna eat that? <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean, look at this. Stretchy. I was reading that um, once you get the hang of this process, you can make like string cheese, which my kids love string cheese. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna go in a Tupperware container now and go in the fridge. Oh goodness, okay. Okay, I am, I really am finding this whole thing humorous. I hope you are. But we did get some cheese. <laughs> not tasted it I'm a little afraid to <laughs> but for your benefit I'll taste it I mean it's a little warm still but it actually needs more salt that's what I'm noticing so I am gonna add more salt but um it doesn't taste bad 
it doesn't taste bad any, by any means. Um, work the salt in, but uh, yeah, it doesn't taste like what you get at the store. But maybe it will, maybe it will. After it sets in the fridge, I'm being very optimistic. After it sets in the fridge, a little more salt, and when it's cooled down, it may be on a pizza, <laughs> right? Okay. I'm just gonna try another piece. Not that I expect it to be miraculously different, but. The salt makes a difference. The salt absolutely makes a difference. All right, I'm gonna chalk that up to a mild success. <laughs> mild success. But yeah, so we made mozzarella. <laughs> Yay! Um, I would love to hear your comments. If you are really proficient at making cheese or mozzarella in general, uh, I'd love to hear your experiences, especially if you've ever tried this kit. I, again, I don't think the kit had any fall here in this process. <laughs> I really do think I needed to use fresher milk. Like I said, it was a few days old. Didn't think it would matter that much, but maybe it does. So I am gonna try this again with milk um, that's milked like that morning and do it literally that day. I, I am gonna try it again when I can find the time. In the meantime, I have a lot of whey. You can see that, a lot of whey. That is what I'm gonna use to make the ricotta later today <laughs> not now i need to take a break from cheese um, but i am going to try that later and i'll film that that'll be the third video in the series um if you didn't want to make ricotta with whey and you had animals it's actually a really good feed for your animals whether it be chickens or pigs um we don't have animals so yeah i'm gonna try to make the ricotta Otherwise, I think you can actually dilute it and even water your plants with it. Um, I think I've read that before, but yeah, if you have some solutions and, and ideas for leftover whey, I'd love to hear that also. So thank you for joining me in this adventure today. I hope it was entertaining for you. It was actually very entertaining for me. I enjoyed this. Um, I always love trying new things. So let me know what your experiences are. Maybe you know exactly what I did wrong. Let me know, please. Um, otherwise, thank you so much. Stay healthy, stay well, and I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.